Are DLCs pay to win? I'm going to leave this question up to you, but I will give you some st statistics and some facts. There are many DLCs. I have most of them apart from two, which is the Balloon and the Santa Ana. There are some which I use a lot and some which I think are a bit pointless. So to help you decide if you are pondering on which DLC to buy, if you are thinking of actually getting one, or even if you're wondering if the DLCs are paid to win, hopefully this video will help you answer that question. As I believe the ships are going to be the more common question, I will start with the ships first. The biggest of which is the Victory DLC. This ship costs a whopping 50 quid on Steam at full price, which is absolutely extortionate. However, you must admit that this is a nice looking ship. There is another Victory in-game, which is the later model of this ship. However, it is actually almost identical. If you're wondering about stats, the left column on here is the DLC, the middle column is the normal in-game victory. From in-game stats the DLC victory is actually better than the normal in-game victory, which means that technically the victory is pay to win. Not a big fan of that but it is what it is and it's only a slight advantage. The main advantage I can see however is that getting a first rate crafted is more challenging than it is for a small ship in terms of resources and time and money so getting a big boat as a DLC is probably going to save you a lot of time and money. The flaw with the victory however is that the victory is the weaker out of the first rate ships. The middle ship here is an ocean and the right hand column is a Santis... I can't see it Santa Thema, Trinidad. The Santi has the most firepower, however is the slowest. The Ocean is a nice bow and has a slightly curved hull. And the Victory is a little bit quicker than the other ones, however it does lack in health points and a broadside damage. So in conclusion of that, the Victory of DLC really isn't viable as it is literally going to be outmatched by the Ocean or the Santi which you can get in game and is crafted or captured. The Redoubtable in my opinion is if you are going to get a ship in game this is the one that you're going to want. This is a third rate ship of the line, quite a sleek looking ship. And in comparison to the other third rates, it holds up extremely well. And with it being a third rate, you get that combination of speed and firepower. So you can happily use the ship in a lot more situations than the first rate. The ship is very similar in terms of stats and sailing qualities as the Implacable, which is a very good third rate ship and is similar to the Admiral de Reuter as well. As you can see the Redoubtable is on the left and the Implacable is in the middle. That being said, the Implacable does have 10% more damage on the broadside, however it is very similar and nothing quite beats the Implacable in terms of a third rate ship. One on the right there is an Admiral de Reuter, quite a rare ship and can usually only be gathered by special events which is also, as you can see in the stats, very similar. In terms of the other third rate ships, they are much lighter and faster. On the left is a Wassa, the middle is a Bologna, and then on the right is a third rate. In general, these three ships have high, uh, higher speed and slower, sorry, lower health points, as well as a weaker broadside. So in terms of third rates, this ship holds up with the heavier of the third rates and is pretty good. Like I said before, if you were going to get a DLC ship, this would be the one I would recommend if you were to be going to spend your money on it. There is a second rate class of DLC ship, which is the Santa Ana. However, this ship is actually identical, bar from the cosmetics, 
as the Christian. It is exactly the same in terms of stats and cannons. As you can see, ignore the column on the right, but the left is a Santa Ana and the middle is a Christian. It is exactly the same. So you can get that ship just by capturing a Christian. Seems a bit pointless to me. But I suppose it is a good mid midway between the third and first rate of ship. The Christian is a, well, the Santa Ana is a bit of a fatter ship than the, than the book, which I suppose looks more like a modern sailing ship. Going down to the fourth rates now, we have the Ratsivan and the Leopard. This is the Leopard, sorry, Ratsivan, this is actually quite a nice ship. And this is the Leopard, arguably a bit prettier, however, this ship is now actually a bit useless. Main advantage of a Leopard is that you can actually fit some nice fat carronades on there, which you cannot do on the Ratsivan. So ideally, the Leopard will actually be better at boarding actions, if you are inclined to be that way. The ship on the left is a Ratsivan and the one in the middle is a Leopard. As you can see, the Leopard is considerably lower in stats all the way around. So really, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me why you would have this ship. Looking at the stats, this Ratsivan is on the left. In the middle, you have the Constitution or the USS United States, basically the same. And on the right you have the Agamemnon. Now, the Ratsivan, in terms of these stats, is actually dominant over these two other ships, which were the big boys before. In terms of hit points, it has the highest out of the lot. So really, the Ratsivan is a little bit pay to win. Not sure if it's a DLC, but the Trincomalee is actually a very nice ship. If it is a DLC, I'm going to say Val, do not buy it, as there are many players who have played before who got given this ship, awarded to them as a DLC for free, which can actually pop these ships out continuously and dish them out to you. If you are in a clan with someone who has that ability, just ask them for one. I'm sure they won't mind giving you one. It doesn't cost them anything, and it's just nice, easy pop, ship out, done. The other deep water ship is the Le Hermione, which is this one. This is actually quite a nice looking ship, however, it is actually rubbish, so do not ever bother buying this one. Into, uh, this ship is worse than the Trincomalee, which you can get for free almost anyway. Pointless. However, it is nice. It lacks firepower and many other things. Going to the shallow water fifth rate ships now. Main ones are your Hercules and the Pandora. Personally, I've always liked the look of the Pandora more. However, in terms of stats, the, the Hercules does pack more damage. However, it does have sailing qualities are a little less. However, it does turn a bit quicker. This one would literally just be a little more based upon your personal preferences. Personally, I would say the Hercules is a little better in terms of stats, as you can hold more carronades on there to do more crew damage. However, that is just personal preference. The Hercules' main competitors, the Surprise in the middle and the Lorena May on the right. As you can see, the Surprise out fires has more sorry has more firepower and health points in general than the Hercules and the Renome is the speedier of the lot. So these fifth rate ships are definitely not overpowered or pay to win. Fifth rate ships are fairly easy to acquire, they are inexpensive so it seems a bit pointless getting these ships. I must say though, the Pandora does seem to be the ship that seems to be getting used in port battles lately. So that might be a thing to consider. I did forget to mention the Trincomalee's main competitors. The Trincomalee is on the left, the Indath is in the centre and the Endymion is on the right. As you can see, the Indath is inferior to the Trincomalee. 
in terms of speed and firepower. However, it does have a large quantity of carronades that you can place on and with a much larger crew. So that would mean that this ship would be more ideal for a boarding action. However, it is slower. The Endymion used to be the speed freak of the seas and now that does not seem to be the case anymore as the Trincomalee is now the same speed as it. The Endymion is a very nice ship, however it does tend to wobble around. Your heel does get quite high and you can easily be leak sunk. You must be aware of that. So the Trincomalee is very much up there with the top ships of the deep water fifth ships. Pandora and the Hercules are fairly average, definitely not overpowered. Don't quite know how well you can see it with it being night time in game now, but this is the Requin. Personally, I absolutely hate this ship. This ship is very unique in its sailing profile, so if you were to ever get the ship, you will have to relearn how to sail. However, if you do manage to master the ship, I will tell you not, this ship is probably the most overpowered ship of its class in the game. With this ship, despite it being a 6th rate ship, you can happily take on all of the other shallow water 5th rate ships with it. Its curved hull makes it sit very low in the water, difficult to hit. Your manoeuvrability is absolutely ridiculous. You have well over enough crew to board another 5th rate ship. You also have a good amount of firepower. And if you really wanted to, you can just sail upwind in the ship and nothing else can catch you in the game. Honestly, this is the most overpowered ship in the game. If you do like your shallow water ships and you want to be a bit of a dick and are up for a challenge, you will learn how to do this and you will dominate many people. This ship can literally swivel around on the spot. There is a 7th rate ship, however I think this ship can only be acquired if you have so many of the other DLCs. So if you are just wanting this ship, I'm afraid you're going to have to spend a load of your money to get it. So really it's not worth it, however it is very nice. This is the yacht. If you would like a recommendation on a 7th rate ship, I would highly recommend the Privateer or the Pickle. The Pickle has more of a traditional sailing kind of feel to it, whereas the Privateer is a bit more whippy and sails upwind better. The Privateer can actually fit a bigger calibre of carronade on there as well, which is very effective against crew. So that is all of the ships which are DLC. There are other DLCs which we shall now talk about. The Forger DLC allows you to switch between different nations honestly isn't worth it unless you are seriously considering changing nation but that is a big decision however you can actually change nation anyway without buying this DLC first with the system wipes that happen every three months or so it kind of makes the forge change nation a bit obsolete as you will lose all of your things in the wipe anyway apart from your navy service medals so it seems a bit pointless when you could just delete your character and create a new one in the nation that you so desire changing your name yes that is nice but just pick a good one at the start and you're all right so a bit pointless admirality connection that is quite a nice one the warehouse slots are nice, the dock space for your vessels is nice, and so is your building permits. However, this is definitely not necessary, but it is just a bit of a nice one. If you are wanting to get your crafting and things up, then it definitely helps with those building permits. The warehouse slots are also very nice. You can easily start building up plenty of things in your warehouse. And the only way to upgrade that in-game normally is by spending money. Now if you don't want to do that, then you might have to pay some real money to get this. But honestly, try it without it first. If you are always desperate for more buildings, then maybe that might be for you. But otherwise I wouldn't bother. 
the national flags I've used this if you've watched any of my other videos you'll see there is probably the Scottish flag I think I'm flying at the moment the flags are actually very nice to be honest uh, I like this customization the one I tend to fly is the Scotland flag as our lass is Scottish and I just like the look of the flag anyway each nation has its own different set of flags which is very nice and it gives you a more unique feel to you and your own ship. The Painter DLC is actually also very nice however it could be improved. This ship for example the Trincomalee I have applied a paint on this. The paints work in a set configuration I'll show you. Here for example here is a different paint that's Breast Harbour there's quite a few for this. They're all a bit similar, that one's quite nice. And so on. And it works by you pick what you like and then you press OK and then you stick it on your boat like a cannon or an upgrade. Just a cosmetic. Personally I like it. I do wish there was more choices of paint on some ships, but it is what it is. All depends on if you like that different customization feel as customization in this game is a bit limited. The Navy Connections one, personally I would recommend this one out of all of the other normal DLCs. The Toll Permits is the big one, that is extremely nice, that is what you need to teleport your ships around the place. The Outpost, slot, outpost slots are also very nice as generally you want to be in lots of different places. Having more Outpost slots allows this to happen. I'm usually selling things on the market or just selling things for cheap just to get rid of it but make a little bit of money on it so having more contracts is definitely more up my sleeve. You also get 5 extra building permits and 5 extra docks for your vessels so I believe this one is better than the Admiralty Connection one. So if you're wanting a bit of an easier time in terms of teleporting ships around then this is the one that you're going to want over the other. The travel balloon it's just a spying ship essentially you just float around in the sky with it I don't have it it's pointless you can't move anything you're really in it apart from a few upgrades perhaps but that is it it is literally just a balloon that you can spy on people with which you can do in game anyway but I suppose you will have an easier time of it. So that concludes all of the DLCs that are currently in the game. I hope you don't waste your money. I hope I've hopefully saved you some money as you would have actually chosen something which is more for your taste rather than spending half your money on things that you're not going to use. Thank you for watching and I hope you do press the like button. Happy sailing. Bye bye.